Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're gonna cover an operating system that some people may be more familiar with than others. And here it is, OS2 2.1 by IBM. You can see here that I was actually running Windows 3.1 on top of it, which is actually one of the very cool features about OS2 2.1 of which I think the claim was that it does Windows better than Windows and DOS better than DOS, or maybe that was 3.0, but nonetheless, you can see that it does at least support Microsoft operating systems. So today, I'm gonna to give you a brief tour of some of the capabilities that exist in OS2 2.1, and we'll go from there. So what you see here is the OS2 desktop and several of the programs that are on the desktop were programs that I installed on top of OS2. However, there are certain things that were included when I finished the original install. For example, there's a fair amount of multimedia support that was installed as a function of installing the IBM OS2 multimedia manager. And that includes this folder over here, as well as this volume control item. I also did make an attempt to install Sound Blaster drivers for my AWE64. However, I think that they are geared towards a newer version of OS2, so we didn't have a whole lot of luck there. We also do have several applications installed to support peer-to-peer -peer networking so that we can access network shares. That would include IBM Peer, as well as IBM TCP IP 2.0, and IBM LAN server uh, for the LAN requester portion of that. And in a future video, I'm actually going to go over how I installed all of those items and got this machine configured. Uh, but today, we're just going to be doing a tour of the OS2 desktop. So other items, of course, as I noted, there is TCP IP support here. There is network support. And over here on the far left, since we did have Windows 3.1 installed prior to installing OS2, all of the Windows 3.1 programs were migrated, as well as the groups. So if we go in here, we can actually see the different program manager groups, and we'll look more at that in a little bit here. At the heart of the system is the OS2 system folder, which we'll also look at here. And along these lines on this side, we have information and help, as well as an easy way to see minimized windows and some templates. The whole concept of this version of OS2 was really about object orientation. Object orientation was big around this time, so everything is geared towards that. You can change the color of an individual folder by dragging a color to it, as well as some other things. And these worked out to be some very neat features. However, arguably not very practical features, <laughs> which is really what you may be going for in an operating system at this time. But that is fair to say that a lot of the capabilities it had were pretty advanced. So let's get to it. Let's start diving into some of these different programs and icons. I think a good place to start would be the OS2 system folder. If we look over here on the left, we can see that. Let's go ahead and double click it. And you can see a variety of applications, including productivity, games, command prompts, setup, startup, and drives. Let's start with drives. So you've got your drive A, B, and C. We can double click on C. And you've got a nice folder structure that pops up here for doing different operations. You can expand the different folders. You can delete the different folders. You can create a copy of them, create a shadow, create another. So we've got a variety of different options here. So there you have it. I don't want to delete anything, so I'm going to leave it for now. I guess we could technically share them as well, though I'm not quite sure how that would work because I don't have all components of LAN server configured. But that's that, kind of neat. We'll go ahead and close that. Oh, you'll also see here that you have some different options on this top left click menu as well, like checking a disk, formatting a disk as well. So that's kind of cool. We'll close that out. Similarly, you could do the same thing for the different disk drives that are here. So that's kind of neat. The startup folder is what you would imagine. And right now it looks like there's two applications that get started on startup, one being TCP IP, as well as network messaging. As for system setup, you can see that you have a variety of different options. We can go in and change the color palette if we'd like. Wow, that kind of looks like a um, tw twister board, <laughs> the way that it's set up. Uh, so we could go with this nice, terrible purple if we wanted to. And we could drag it to, say, some sort of a window, and it would, in theory, make it that color. Though it doesn't seem to be quite working, but that's the idea. 
So you, uh, you can, oh, okay, you right click and then you can drag and lo and behold, oh my, I don't know what we've done here, but I think we want to undo it quickly. Uh, let's pick this here. But yeah, if you wanted to color different windows, different colors, you can certainly do that. And again, that's that whole concept of object orientation. So now we've forever colored this window to this. Let's put it back to what it was. There you have it. Kind of interesting, kind of neat, kind of gee whiz. So we also have uh, some other things here, adapters and protocol services. I think that's going to launch MT, uh, MPTS, which is where we can configure your network cards and things. When we go through the installation, we'll look at this in detail. Uh, but what you see here probably looks familiar to what you'd see on other operating systems where you can configure your network card, you can configure the different protocols. And once again, we'll definitely be covering this in great detail when we do the tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and close it out. It's going to try and save the configuration, but we're going to see if we can get away from that. Okay, so you have that. Different fonts, kind of cool. So we can edit different fonts apparently. How about that? Change the styles, kind of neat. Change the size. Uh, but yeah, definitely have some fonts here. Just a few installed for the time being. Times Roman, Helvetica, and Courier look to be the predominant ones, but you can definitely see that we do have some fonts. We do have a country option here for choosing different countries. Uh, nothing too interesting about it other than you do have your drop downs. You can change how different things have different separators, different measurements, things along those lines. And I guess you can set your time and date and numbers and as well as general settings as well, including changing an icon if you want. So that's kind of neat. As far as system is concerned, when we go in here, you can see that you can set different options like confirmations on performing actions, uh, titles. If there's some sort of a clash with different titles, you can decide how to handle that. How windows appear, how print screen works, because yeah, if you hit the print screen key, it's going to try and print to something directly to your printer perhaps, which was actually kind of a cool feature if you think about it. Um, but if you wanted to disable that, you could definitely do that as well as some logo and other general settings. So that's what your system dialogue is all about. And you can see some other items as well. You can do some setup options for WinOS 2 if you want to make it full screen or a window, as well as configuring data exchange and what the different icons look like as well for this particular item. So kind of neat. Uh, keyboard, as you would expect. Mouse, as you would expect as well. Changing the double click speed, things along those lines. So that's pretty much what you have for the uh, system setup view. If we come back over here, we can also see we have a variety of command prompts, kind of similar in some respects to OS2 1.3 when we looked at it. You can create an OS2 window. Uh, you can create a DOS window. You can go to WinOS2, which we didn't have in 1.3, but that's an option as well. So just different options here for uh, performing different types of command prompt operations that you like to perform. And as we go through the walk through, you will see that I use the OS2 window quite a bit for setting up the system. Also have a few games. We have a jigsaw puzzle. I guess you have to open some sort of a bitmap file and then it'll create a jigsaw puzzle for you, apparently. Um, jumble it up. Oh my, I think we could be here a while. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not this smart, so we're not going to try and attempt this, but you could imagine that this would be fun to put together. Look how small those pieces are. My eyes just aren't that good. But yeah, you can do a jigsaw puzzle if you want. Yep. Scramble. Okay, so that's your, your classic uh, little word slider or number slider. And I imagine the uh, objective is to try and get everything in order. So that's kind of neat. And there's also a chess game if you're really up for a long uh, afternoon of, of playing games. Maybe you don't feel like uh, doing your work that day. I guess you could certainly play chess. And it'll be interesting to see just how good the computer is. Or I guess in this case we're playing uh, two player. So, nope. Oh. It's not going to let you make moves you're not allowed to. Okay, yeah, you can, you can use computer players so you can see just how good they are all the way up to advanced. So that's kind of neat as well. So those are most of the games. You've got Reversi, of course, and you've got Solitaire. Everybody has to have Solitaire. In this case, it's Klondike Solitaire. Look at that card deck. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the OS2 card deck. I love it. Got to brand your, uh, your software for sure. That's great. So those are the games. 
And as we navigate back to system, you can see there's also productivity applications, including a picture viewer, a sticky pad. We can look at that. So I guess you can keep your notes here. Um, you've got different things here for making charts, editors, terminal, alarms, calendars, all kinds of things. You can also do uh, to-do lists and things. So kind of neat, a monthly planner. If you want to do some planning, that's pretty blocky looking fonts here. Cannot perform actions as it requires a planned file to have been selected. So I guess you have to open up a file first, uh, which we don't have. So anyway, kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, you can keep a monthly planner if you want, to-do list. And similar to OS213 that we looked at, we also do have the system editor for editing text files. So that's available as well. Kind of neat. So that's the OS2 system group. We also have this information item here, and I guess it has a variety of different command references, tutorials, if you want to take a tutorial on OS2, you can definitely do that, learn how to use the mouse and the keyboard, how to work with objects, things along those lines, so kind of cool. As well as a README, which tells us all about 2.1 Special Edition for use with Windows version 3.1 and it's designed for licensed users of Microsoft Windows version 3.1 product. And as I found, don't try and install Windows for Workgroups 3.11. When you do, nothing really launches anymore, which is kind of odd. There's also this minimized window viewer. So if you actually minimize things, you can come here and you can open them up again with ease. Looks like we've got network messaging, which we did see started up on startup, so that's running minimized as well as Program Manager that we saw earlier. We also have a network group up here. And this has LAN server and OS2 peer resources. So it talks a little bit about the user ID, uh, the description, and where we have required logins. We also have the OS2 peer network for sharing and connecting. Also have error logs, network messaging as we saw earlier, and some books. Let's have a look at that. So your books are going to be the glossary and the configuration guide for configuring MPTS, which is the uh, transport system used. Kind of neat. So let's take a minute to explore some of the command line networking items I've set up. If I go to command prompts here and then go to an OS2 window, we can do a net use command to connect to my Raspberry Pi. Looks like it may be wanting a user ID and a password. Let's type guest. Login was successful, and the command completed successfully. There you have it. So now if we go to drive Z, we can see my Raspberry Pi. We can also telnet. And I don't know why this does this by default, but the terminals aren't always expanded the way you would expect. So those are the network operations that we have available, and I can tell you they were not easy to set up but they are now set up on this particular machine. And we'll go over that in the next video as well. So let's look at WinOS 2 integration here a little bit. If we double click on WinOS 2 groups, we can see that we have our Windows 3.1 program manager items. And for example, you've got the clipboard viewer, print manager, you've got the standard readme. And what's kind of neat is if you double click on these icons, Although it does take a little while, you'll see that we basically get a seamless window in OS2. So, in theory, we should be able to take some text here and copy it, and then come over to an OS2 program. And in theory, paste that text in. And there you have it. So that's kind of cool. So seamless integration between OS2 and Windows 3.1 programs, as well as a seamless window. So that's kind of neat. So if you've got certain games that you had in 3.1 that you wanted to play, you can definitely do that. 
If you had certain accessories that you liked or different applications, you could run your Windows 3.1 applications here in OS 2, if that's Word for Windows or whatever it may be. So kind of neat. We can definitely do some uh, paintbrush drawing or what have you without having to switch and boot into Windows 3.1. On the far right, we have Multimedia, which was installed by installing the IBM Multimedia Manager 2. You can see here that there is a video player and a MIDI player, as well as a variety of sound bites that are included. Uh, however, once again, when we try to play them, it basically says there's no digital audio adapter installed, digital audio will not run, or some other issue. But we tried anyway. So that's kind of neat, all of these different multimedia concepts. So there you have it, OS 2, 2.1. What a great operating system. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content to come. Ring that notification bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. That helps us decide what sort of content we make in the future. In future weeks, you can look for how-tos on how I set up this uh, particular system, as well as covering more versions of OS 2. So that will be what we do in the future. Anyway, that's all for now. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.